thank you for being here today. Appreciate the good singing that Luke led us in, and to God be the glory for all things great and small, for sure. Amen. Amen. Get this microphone on, Andrew. All right. Tonight is the fourth Sunday night of the month, and we have congregational singing led by the men, and some of the men who do not feel comfortable leading a song or have that ability uh, will do a reading or share a short uh, illustration or spiritual thought. So I hope you'll be with us for the evening service tonight, the Lord willing, at 6 o'clock. We'd love for you to be here. And let's add to this, Sammy Stout injured himself uh, working on the roof, and uh, so we pray he gets feeling better real soon. And let's see, I believe Ben Reed is here today as the son of Larry and Sharon. Ben was the heart of our youth group for uh, many years at Sycamore, and uh, he was a fireball and still is serving the Lord, and so we really are glad to see Ben and all of you that are here today. The lesson this morning is titled, And God With Us, God With Us. The text was read to us from Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is by interpretation, God with us. Now, we add to this Luke 7 and verse 16, after the raising of the widow of Nan's son, it was said by the folks there that God had visited his people. God with us, God hath visited his people. Jesus is God. John 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, I should have said, and the Word was God. And verse 14, the Word dwell, became flesh and dwelt among us, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Jesus is God. He is among us. God is with us. And when you stop and think about it, Godhead of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, represented by our Lord, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus is God and is among us. He has all power and dominion. In Matthew 28, called the Great Commission, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. We're thinking today about Jesus, God, having the power of creation, the power over disease, the power over death. There is power in the blood. Those are some of the things we're thinking about today of the Almighty who says, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Revelation chapter four and verse 11, in glorifying our Lord, it was said there to John the Revelator that Jesus was worthy of glory, honor, and power. You ever thought about that? He is worthy. He is of honor and power. So we're thinking about that power today. First of all, the King, the Lord, God Almighty, God among us, God visit His people, when you stop and think about it, he has the power over sin. Power over sins. And that's one of the most, one of the greatest things to think about. Because we all sin. And we fall short of the glory of God, of perfection. We're human beings. We're not divine. We are not deity. So we stumble and we fall. We say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. And Jesus is willing to forgive us our sins. He has the power to forgive sins. In Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 20 of Luke 5, in verse 20. When they saw, when he saw their faith, he's talking about the men who lowered the man with Paul's ear, the paralytic. They couldn't get to Jesus or near Jesus. And so they took the roof apart, the fast roof, 
and four of them, I guess, could have been six or eight, but at least four, lowered his body down where Jesus could see this man in his crippled condition. And so when he saw their faith, he said, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this that speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Yes, there's the point. Who can forgive sins? They're right. They are exactly right. No one can forgive sins except God alone. Now it goes on. Jesus perceived their thoughts. He said, Why reason such in your hearts? Well, is it easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you may know that, that the Son of Man hath power. Watch it, watch it now. But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins, he says to the sick of palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy couch, and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up his whereon he lay, and departed into his own house, glorifying God. Jesus has the power to forgive sins. So they were correct. Only God can, and Jesus is God. So he could do that, which only is possible through the Lord Jesus, the forgiveness of our sins. Look at Isaiah 1 and verse 18. Isaiah 1 and verse 18. We've got a description given there concerning the Lord by prophecy in regard to Isaiah 1 and verse 18. Come to me and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And we've heard about the crimson tide, I think, a few times, yay or nay. But uh, our sins are like crimson. And you know that bright red color is what the description is given there, Isaiah 1 and verse 18. But it shall become, your sins, like crimson, shall become as wool, white, or as snow, and there's nothing whiter than snow. But our sins can be forgiven and will be forgiven by the power of Jesus Christ. Another good reference is Acts 22 and verse 16. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. <laughs> Revelation 1 and 5. Unto him who loved us and who washed us from our sins in his own blood. The blood of Jesus is the detergent that has the power to wash away my sins, your sins. The blood of the cross is able to wash away sins. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as white as snow. That's a beautiful statement of what God is able to do. Jesus has all power. He has the power and the ability to forgive sins. Second of all, Jesus has the power over demons, demonic beings. We don't have too much to worry about in that regard because we do not believe demon possession is possible today. The devil can possess us and the devil can rule your life and evil can rule our lives and sometimes does, but not the power that he had while Jesus was here on earth, that he could literally, demons could enter the bodies of people and, and cast them into the fire and cast them into the water and make them do all kinds of foolish things because of the power of the devil. Not any longer. Jesus had power over the demonic forces. Luke chapter 4, beginning in verse 40. Luke 4 and 40. <clears throat> Now when the sun was setting, and they that had any sick with divers or various diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And the devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. <clears throat> he cast the demons out. He had power with the demonic realm of, 
of existence. The power of Jesus over sin, the power over demons, <coughs> excuse me, he has power over nature as well. The Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, there was light. The power to speak the universe into existence. That's the power of the cross. That's the power of the one who went to the cross. That's the power of Jesus. The omnipotent, almighty could say, let there be light. And there was light. And the bright light of the day and the evening shadows, all a part of God's creation of earth and of heaven and of darkness and of light. God's power over nature. God created it and made it possible. In Luke chapter 8, thinking about Jesus having the power over Luke 8 and 22, the power over nature. One of my favorite references here, Luke 8 and 22. It came to pass on a certain day, Jesus went in a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let's go over on the other side of the lake. Sea of Galilee, or Lake of Genesis area. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the water, on the lake. And they were filled with water. Their boats were filling up with water. And they were in jeopardy. You thought it was just a television program. It can happen in Bible times. And they came to him and awoke him and said, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, what? where is your faith? Where is your faith? But they being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this, that he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. Jesus has all power, power over sin, power of the demons, power over nature, even the winds and the waves obey His will. The Son of God. Power over sickness. We read one reference concerning the sick, that Jesus had the power to relieve and help those folks. Luke 4, 38, and uh, beginning verse 38 of Luke 4. He arose and went out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he said, he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. He had the power to speak, and the fever left the body of the sick. Jesus has power to help the sick today as well. And this is a difficult dilemma. Why would we pray if we didn't believe Jesus could help the sick? Why do so many people call and say, please put my loved one on the care line because we need prayer. We need a lot of prayers going. We believe that Jesus still heals the sick. That he has power over sickness. Now the dilemma comes there are certain rules of the universe and of creation that say we're all going to die. We're all going to somehow, not, something's going to happen to us that we're not to live here on this earth forever. Sickness and death are reality. The point of the man wants to die after this comes the judgment. So we can't stop the death process. But one of the great stories of the Old Testament, Isaiah 38, about King Hezekiah, God said, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. And he prayed, and he turned his face toward the wall, and he wept, and he prayed. And our father intercepted Isaiah, leaving the grounds, said, Go back. I want you to tell Hezekiah, I've seen his tears, sincerely, and I've heard his prayer. I'm going to increase his life 15 years. I believe that. I believe that's still possible today according to the will of God. Remember James 5 and verse 
14. Is there any sick among you? Now he's writing to Christians. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. If he's committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now let's add another verse to this. 1 John 5 and 14. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. It must be according to the will of the Father. But we believe that yes, Jesus can. I think some of us right here in this audience are a part of that 15 year help. And uh, add 15 to whatever your age is. It may be a little scary for some of us. But you know, I believe God is working even in the lives of so many today. His will. He has the power of a city. But it must be the will of God. We, we're, we can't live here forever. We're not going to live forever here. We're, our days are numbered. But we have the hope and the blessing of knowing that Jesus does have the power of sin. I hope, pray, that whatever the future may hold for all of us, that we're able to say, listen, Listen, Doc. Listen to me, Doctor. I know what you're saying. But my faith and my belief is in the Almighty God and that He uses doctors and He uses medicine to increase life according to His will. He has the power over sickness as He did in Bible times. He has the power over disabilities. We saw that with the man with the palsy. And last of all, he has the power over death. Revelation, well, you know, I jumped ahead of myself there. The centurion servant was on the point of death, according to Luke 7, and was helped by Jesus, was dying, and was helped. And then we've got the beautiful story in Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse 11. Luke 7 and 11 came to pass the day after Jesus went to a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. He was the only son of his mother. She was a widow. She's lost everybody now. Much people of the city was with her. A lot of people thought a lot of this lady. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion. He always has compassion. He always has compassion on her. And he said, woman, weep not. And he came and he touched the briar, and that would be the coffin. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there was a fear on all that. And they all glorified God, saying, that a great prophet has risen up. No, no, no. God has visited his people. Jesus is God. And the power over death is one of the powers that he has. <clears throat> in Luke, in Genesis, I'll get it right. Revelation chapter 20, in verse 11. John said, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand. Dead, dead people don't stand. But John saw dead people standing. Huh. Somebody's got a lot of power here over the dead. When you're young, and somebody you love very much dies, it's hard to accept it. And you realize the power. I was 22 when my dad died. He was only 51. And when we went to visitation, I passed out. I wasn't trying to put on a show. I, I literally, my, my legs just went out from under me. I hit the deck. Now I've held several funerals, even at 22 years of age. But it was, there was a power there. The power was that my dad couldn't talk to me anymore. My dad couldn't speak. His 
a whole different realm of, it, of being. And there was nothing I could do about it. I'd always been able to take care of things that needed to be done. I couldn't do it. But there's a the power of someone who is able to do that. To raise the dead. I said to the arise, and he arose. John said, I saw the dead. John, what were they doing? They were standing before God. And the books were open, and other books open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books. So judgment is coming. The dead shall be raised. Only Jesus has the power to raise the dead. You know what I'm talking about? Have you been there? Have you felt that power of death and the ending of... And, and to know there's only one. There is one who can raise the dead. Not these fates, not these money changers, but really can raise the dead and shall be raised for all, all eternity when the end of time shall come and the judgment day shall be. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. We've thought about the power of Jesus, God among us. God visited His people. And that he has the power over sin, the power over demons, power over the sick, power over nature, power over the dead. Mighty, wonderful power. If there's one here today that has never rendered your life, given your life to the Lord, look how much he's done to give his life for us. He hath all power in heaven and earth. Would you bow down before Him? Would you accept Him as your Lord and Savior? Repenting of your sins, be baptized for the remission of your sins today while there's time and opportunity. Maybe you are a Christian and you just become unfaithful and you need to be restored. You need to do that. He has the power. I, Isaiah 1 and 18. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Amen. Would you let His blood wash away your sins today unto Him who loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood? Revelation 1 and 5. It's your decision, but we hope you'll make it to serve the Lord, to let your sins be washed away by the blood of Christ. While we stand, while we sing.